Hi everyone, this lesson we will talk about buying colors and generally onto the skin color uh, skin layer. So uh, for now that we have done uh, the hard light and we sort of get the overall feel of the entire forms and a little bit of forms and value of the character. So right now I am going to duplicate my hard light into every part of the layer mask. Skin, all the masking has own hard light mask. So what we can do at this point is to change the color of the hard light by using color balance. You can definitely either merge down and do this step or you can just straight away do it with the hard light layer. So adding a little bit of color into the shadow is that generally a nice way to give it a little bit of vibrancy. Not just not just for the skin but also even like darker colors. Yeah, in this case our character has a a little bit of brown in the costume so that's that's also a time like this also we are at a time where we can also give a little bit of colors uh, into the hard light as well or even the local color of the mask so if this is a bit blue uh, a bit black you can actually just change the color like that uh, maybe for the wings too wing we can lean it a little bit more to the purple uh, for this lesson, uh, we are definitely going to focus more on the skin itself, the face. So we have already cut the face out of the uh, line work. So let's go ahead and put it on to on top of the skin layer. But there's a problem that we are facing right now. The eye is getting covered by the hair simply because hair layer is on top. So what we can do at this point is after we have adjust the color to what we want, we can definitely merge down the hair and cut out the part that is behind. So this part of the hair is definitely behind our character. We can cut it out and then let's put it behind the skin. So our eye is able to be in front of the hair right now. It's not covered anymore. At this point, uh, I am going to lower down the opacity of the uh, line work because uh, it's no longer as important anymore because we can see the forms of the character already. And right now the skin still looks uh, fairly like a little bit dirty. Uh, normally how I would fix that is to uh, merge down and then I will go to color curves and adjust it from the red layer because uh, our skin normally has more red getting the correct amount of red in the skin will generally make the skin look sweeter and cleaner of course uh we are not going to uh, neglect the other channels uh generally our skin also have a little bit of blue and green in it and skin is generally in the warm tone you want a little bit of green on the high li uh, the lighter part of the skin that way it will cool up the skin as well as the blue so if you pull this up uh, our skin will definitely look uh, a little bit more natural you try try to play around with the curves a little bit i think the, the skin is currently too dark at some parts of it so I think this is a, a good place to start. Uh, I think the shadow area still needs a little bit of red. So I'm going, going to go ahead and bump up the red in the shadow. Let's also separate out the mask of the gloves and the leg itself. And also we can afford to do a little bit of cleanup as we go. And uh, for me, I uh, generally would uh, use uh, color dodge on highlight to pull out the form of uh, object like the hand, the thigh. Notice I'm just using a big brush to pull out their forms uh, just a little bit. And I I think we have we are running into some issue right here on the clothes. So uh, basically what uh, is wrong is that the this part of the clothes is making us feel that but it's a little bit flat. So what I'm going to do is I will duplicate it uh, and fix the form. The part is going uh, more backwards so and then we see this part the other side of the costume would 
be coming out from here. This way, I think it will look slightly better, make the butt look rounder and more voluptuous. Uh, at this point, uh, let's turn off the, the line for the tail first because it's very distracting. Uh, since we have a uh, masking for the skin and we deleted the mask, the skin that's behind the clothes, right? We have to uh, manually add that back in before we do the detailing. If not, uh, we will be wasting time to counterpaint everything later on. Let's add in the skin now. But yeah, the skin is currently still rough, so it's good to fix our mask and stuff. We can go ahead and merge down the light on the wings and you know like the skin color the color right here i can i'm just going to color pick from the references because we already have the local color from the references and don't forget that's a, a little bit of subsurface gathering here on the wing and notice the wing behind should be slightly lighter than the wing in front because uh, things that goes to the background should generally be affected by the the color of the fork uh, in this case white right so we can just add a little bit of white push it back to the background a little bit and we, we are fine with it i think i have uh, cut the hair a little bit too early because we haven't get the color of the hair correctly yet so that is a mistake on my part so we are we are going to of course tune up the hair get the correct color now let's focus on the skin and the face so for skin uh i'm making a new layer on top what we can do is we can paint uh, we can keep the line work or the separate layer so we can paint on top and below the line work and also the line work currently looks very gray we can add a little bit of color so i will first go on by lightening the line work and then control b to you know add in the red color on the line work yeah, from here uh, we can paint in the, the color of the blush the face the color of the face and the lip even and uh, right now there's a lot of dirty color that i don't like of the skin so i'm going to go ahead and make the skin color look a little bit better this shadow around here they look very dirty uh one way you can do is by lightening up give it a little bit more saturation uh, that will also make the skin color look slightly better if you're afraid of changing try to make a new layer and paint on top of it and also remember to use a bigger brush because you want the skin to generally be looking as a whole the rendering it one by one so what happened if, if i pick this color you will have dirt, a lot of dirty values around it so it's generally better for you to glaze and then go in on the detail again later on so i generally use a little bit more radar tone for the skin that's a, a little bit of preference here and also i think it's time to define the neckline and the shoulder because uh, if we turn off the line work we are not going to see anything this area is completely missing so it's important to try to add in as many separation as many indication as possible we can start drawing the ear later on for now the eye looks a little bit wider than usual but we can do the liquify later for now i will start doing the detail on the eye and let's look at our character itself right so she has a shadow like a purple eye shadow around the character so let's add that in as well purple uh, maybe slightly leaning towards the red just like the hair I'm using a soft brush at this point because we are not defining any detail right now. Detail is definitely for later. And the softer it is, the easier for you to do the detail later on because uh, details are meant to be sharper and the rest of the uh, soft brush is just giving sort of an impression to your pieces. And for female faces, uh, generally a lot of things are softer. And for eye, uh, blue, we have a blue eye here. And she has a very dark eye liner around the eye so let's also give her that if you're unsure at this point whether you want to uh, draw the eyeliner first or the eyelashes first uh, i would totally advise you to separate your layers and then you can draw the eyeliner below it and the eyeshadow and the makeup that way you have more control to your painting as well uh, also notice that i'm using more and more saturated colors uh, especially for the eyes because the eye is definitely our focal point and we have like this shadow around the socket so i'm going to add that in as well i'm just picking colors from the skin itself 
So once you have all the color down uh, on your character, you don't really need to pick new uh, colors anymore. You can just uh, pick colors from your character. So we are going for a more studio lighting look. For now, we are just doing the base of the character. Just imagine that she is in a studio with diffuse lighting. Yeah, and that's how we are going to render her. So something like the reference we have. Or this character that's taken on the studio lighting, a room with a lot of diffuse lighting. So yeah, uh, do not worry about crashes. Uh, if there's no deadline and it's a personal piece, sometimes redoing it again uh, will give you a better result as well. Of course, uh, no one wants to be in that situation, but sometimes <laughs> Photoshop is just like that. <laughs> Same process, uh, look at the lighting, like the highlight I added on the hair, right? Uh, it's actually just uh, uh, color dodge. I use a lot of color dodge uh, uh, to ambient lighting or giving forms to the things that I want. So uh, this is perhaps a, a technique that you guys can adopt. Uh, I don't think many artists use this color dodge because they couldn't control the value yeah the downside of color dodge is that you cannot really control the colors sometimes so use it as a uh, use it uh, cautiously okay we can uh, go ahead and detail the face even more uh, that's uh, everyone's favorite parts to do and it's also the most important part right of the painting you generally want to also feel a little bit more motivated after you finish the face because uh, since the face is the selling point, uh, we generally want it to look as good as possible before we move on to rendering the other parts. So let's go back to our character sheet and look into the details of the eye. So uh, generally, I will use this kind of soft brush and then add to add the pupil in the eyes and go darker and then yeah, so that create the base of our eye already i actually wanted her to have a squinted eye a little bit more close there should be a little bit of eye back around her under the side of the eye and if you guys do not know how to do this uh like draw like that kind of eye back please uh use a reference as well uh this kind of uh, eye bag is uh, generally very popular in uh, Korean makeup. So yeah, definitely uh, researching into makeup uh, generally will help you in understanding how or why a girl look a certain way. Yeah, that, that would definitely uh, increase your knowledge on drawing female faces. Uh, this eye seems very too small. So I'm thinking of pushing the eye in a little bit by pushing, pulling in this nose bridge. I remember this, the thing that, uh, the, this part of the nose that's bent in is, uh, aligned with our tear duct. Yeah, so, uh, anatomy definitely comes into play. Speed painting, uh, as in painting, uh, watching me paint, definitely one thing. Uh, the knowledge behind, uh, learning, uh, facial structure is also very, very important. I can show you the process, how to render faces, but, uh, learning, drawing good faces still require understanding of human facial structure. So be sure to not skip your practices. Uh, at this point, I think I'm thinking of merging down the eyes and uh, liquefying it a little bit. But okay, let's do the shadow first for the eye. We also have a gloss on top of the eye. We also have a double eyelid uh, that I have not drawn in it. Uh, you also notice that I haven't drawn any eyelashes on this eye because uh, I want to finish the base makeup before I draw the eyelash. Uh, many artists will jump into drawing eyelashes first. If you want to do that, you better make a new layer because drawing the eyelash then going below to add the eyeshadow is a pain. Oh, for gloss, you want to use a harder brush and then you want to go over with lighter and lighter color. Make a new layer, uh, draw the eyelashes. I love the eyes, so I think we can merge down at this point. If you're afraid um, 
of merging down, duplicate, then merge down. So you can always go back to the previous step. And right now, um, I'm going to sort of liquefy the face. The eye is not balanced. I feel that this eye is a little bit too wide, so I'm going to push it. And also the shape of the chin. And don't worry about the, the part that is not looking good. As you can see, we have separated the hair and the hair is below. We can always fill up the void with the hair. And for this part, we can make another layer below the hair, you know, below the skin, and then just pick a local color and go through the skin. And then just merge, merge it down and you will, get, you will generally get back the masking that you need. Separate this part. Uh, and look, looking at her hair, also this hand should be calming. Okay, so let's flip the canvas and check the face and we shall probably move on to the next step. So flip, I think we can add some more uh, as for me, like uh, as, as long as every time I'm changing the faces, I will duplicate because I'm afraid of messing up the, the face. And also, it's also a good way to check whether the previous face or the new face is better. Uh, for the lip, right, uh, avoid using black color on the shadow. Generally, a uh, new artist would use black color on shadow. But in fact, right, the reason why we use red for the shadow is because uh, our lip will tend to bounce a lot of light around each other. So if the light comes from, let's say, the top, the red light will bounce here. And then the red light will bounce in and bounce in and bounce in and bounce in. Therefore, that creates a little bit of subsurface scattering onto the lip. And that is also how our lid is more red on the inside, on the shadowy area. So please uh, take note of that. And also she has a fang. Uh, maybe we can also give her a fang. Please use reference for the lip, the nose, the eyes uh, separately if you need to. And to add gloss, uh, normally I will give it a little bit of rim light. Uh, she still doesn't look like she's smiling. So I might need to push this up a little bit more. The lip seems to be a little bit too low right now. So probably we have to try shifting the mouth a little bit. Yeah, definitely it's preference on the chin part. Uh, some people would like a sharper chin. As for me, I'm trying to achieve a more natural look for her chin. We are looking up towards her. So we are definitely going to see the under side of the chin a little bit. And also, in terms of proportion, uh, I think the ear should be coming out from here instead. Uh, and, and if the ear is like hiding behind the hair, just move the hair, move the ear up. This way, we can adjust the ear independently. Yeah, we don't need to counter paint the hair every time we move the ear. Uh, again, I'm using the lazy way of uh, dodging pull out the ear. And right now, uh, what I don't like about the hair. Shape is so yeah. Uh, let's try to fix that as well. Cause it feels like she has a receding cranium. Previous version. And shadow around here because uh, this hair is in the on the inside. Okay, um, guys, we shall move on to rendering hair. Uh, that's it for the skin part of the rendering skin and faces. So I'll see you guys on the next lesson.